Good morning and welcome to worship at North Fairfield United Methodist Church and an exciting morning it is as we welcome Pastor Ted and his wife Sherry into ministry with us at North Fairfield. Now Pastor Ted isn't exactly new to us as we've been in ministry with Fitchville and New Haven but as we start this new chapter in ministry with Pastor Ted and Sherry it occurred to me that maybe we should properly introduce him. So I asked him for a bio and I will read that for you this morning. Ted Buell was appointed pastor to the Fitchville and North Fairfield United Methodist Churches on July 1st, 2021, serving three quarters time at Fitchville and one quarter time here in North Fairfield. From 2019 to 2021, he served as lead pastor to the Fitchville New Haven North Fairfield Consortium. Prior to that, he served as pastor of the Barnesville First Batesville United Methodist Charge. He began his pastoral ministry at North Liberty United Methodist Church as a student local pastor in 2011. He was formerly assistant to the chaplain of Berea Children's Home and Family Services, now Ohio Guidestone, and missions coordinator for the River of Life United Methodist New Church Start in Olmstead Falls. He is an elder in full connection in the East Ohio Annual Conference. As a, quote, second career clergy, Ted graduated from the Methodist Theological School in Ohio in 2012 with a Master of Divinity degree. Ted is a 1980 graduate of Ball State University where he studied economics. Before responding to the call to ministry, Ted enjoyed a successful career in sales. Ted was a long, life, long time resident of Berea, Ohio and former member at the United Methodist Church of Berea where he met his wife, Sherry. Sherry is a deaconess in the United Methodist Church and serves as the church and community engagement coordinator for Flat Rock Homes and Care Center, an East Ohio health and welfare agency. Together, they are parents to five adult daughters and eight grandchildren. Ted and Sherry enjoy boating in the summer, and Ted also enjoys hiking and skiing. So we are blessed to welcome Pastor Ted and Sherry to our ministry. I have a few gifts for you this morning. This is the one, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Church cookbook. It will, it will use in good health. Coffee mug for each of you. Oh, look at that. I love it. Thank you so much, Leanne. Thanks, everyone. Happy Independence Day. I better start there, but uh, what, what a privilege it is to, to be here. You know, big shoes to follow. I have the utmost respect for your former pastor. Sarah was just wonderful. And uh, I just hope I can, you know, lead in the, in the same grace and spirit th that she did. But uh, thank you so much for letting me practice ministry here in North Fairfield. God bless. Amen. Just want to go over a few announcements this morning as we get things going. Um, just a reminder that uh, um, if you have any joys or concerns um, and you're online, you can please feel free to share those and we will make sure to lift those up in prayer. Um, that's any prayer requests or praises, please uh, send those in. Don't hesitate to do that. If you do have an offering that you would like to share this morning, if you're worshiping in-house with us, we have a little church building on the back table that you may put your offering in. Uh, if you happen to be online watching at some point, we do have a P.O. Box 207 um, in North Fairfield here. If you would like to send in your offering, that is awesome. Remember that masks are optional. You're more than welcome to wear a mask if you like. Today starts the beginning of our new worship time, 1045. Um, so keep that in mind. Small group time starts at about 945. So if you're available for small group, please come at 945 um, on Sunday morning. Vacation Bible School is getting very close, and I believe Lyndon may have an announcement on that. July 12th, 13th, and 14th. I haven't played you the music yet. Usually I have that going to get you excited. So, but it's coming. It's this this coming um, Monday, the July 12th, Tuesday and Wednesday. So just three days to pack all the fun into um, a nice 
slower start to get back to this ministry, um, and we will not be holding, hosting a meal. Um, so it'll just be from 6.30 to 8.30, and um, we're welcoming kids eight, or four and up. And I need kids. I don't have anybody registered yet. Um, so be the first one to get a child registered, um, and I will give you a hug or a high five. <laughs> because I, to make this program work, we need the kids. So spread the word. Um, also, um, I'm always looking for volunteers because I know those kids will come. And so in order to um, be able to share and have fun and um, dance and sing and play games and help them um, learn more about God, we need volunteers to help um, be alongside them. So please let me know if you'd like to help with that also. Thank you. Very good. Any other announcements this morning that we may have missed? Seeing none, if you would please stand with me. We're going to sing uh, hymn number 147, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Would you please stand? pray with me. Most gracious and heavenly Father, creator of all things, God, that uh, hymn is an awesome, awesome prayer to you. God, we just thank you so much for your amazing creation, for the sunshine, for the birds that are singing through the windows this morning just as loud as we are singing out of these windows. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for that. Thank you for that reminder that we all need, that you made everything. You made each and every smile that is in this sanctuary this morning. God, we thank you for that. God, we uh, pray your presence be all over this new chapter in the life of North Fairfield United Methodist Church. We thank you so much for Pastor Ted and for Sherry being here in your midst this morning. God, we just pray a blessing upon their lives and their family. God, may this, this new adventure be exciting and, and uplifting to them. Uh, may we be able to pour into them as much as they pour into us. And God, we thank you so much. Uh, for their hearts, um, their servant hearts that are just lived out loud um, 
God, throughout this community. And we thank you so much for that. God, we just pray your blessing upon this new adventure as we step off. Uh, the first step um, in a line of many uh, that just seek and desire to honor you in all things. We just pray your peace and your blessing upon that. Just be with every ounce of this service this day. Um, God, help us to feel your presence here. Just stir our hearts and our minds in new ways. God, we thank you so much for this 4th of July, this, this opportunity that we have to celebrate our independence. God, we meet in this sanctuary every Sunday, and we do it without fear. God, we're free to do this, and this is fantastic that we have this opportunity just to worship you. God, we thank you for the freedoms that you've blessed us with. Just guide and direct and to use that wisely. In your precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our opening scripture this morning comes from Psalms. It's Psalm 48, and I will read it in its entirety. I'll give you a second to find it if you want to look it up. Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zephon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror, trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labor. You destroyed them like ships of Tarshish, shattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen, in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God. God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go around her, count her towers, consider well her ramparts, view her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Me? Yes. We're up. I can't begin to tell you what a great pleasure it is to be here. I didn't realize, I thought we we're going to have a different scripture. May I read from the gospel? Would that be out of turn? No, you <laughs> You'll have to give me a chance to just get it. I, I, my intention is to just keep our worship what you're used to and conform what I'm doing to that. I, I, I told Matt and, and uh, Leanne and Les that things didn't go so well this morning over at Fitchfield. That uh, it was a little... A little rocky for the new time, and, and I, said, I, I hope that's not what we're going to experience here, but I, I'd like to read, and if you've got this, uh, Lachlan, uh, the Gospel according to St. Mark, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Yeah, that looks like it. Uh, it's a, in this passage, we hear about Jesus' rejection in his hometown village in Nazareth. But then he, he gathers his disciples, the apostles, together, and he sends, out, uh, each, he sends them out two by two to minister in his name. So we'll begin at uh, verse 1 and, and uh, through verse 13 in chapter 6 of uh, Mark. Jesus left that place. He would, before this, he was out on the Sea of Galilee uh, and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that's been given to him? What? Deeds of power are being done by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? 
and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could not do great deeds of power there, except he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then he went among the other villages teaching, and he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over unclean spirits. And he ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no money, but to wear sandals and not put on an extra outer garment. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. My friends, this is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May we follow those instructions of Christ as we seek to do His will and His ministry. Amen. So thanks for allowing me to go there. <laughs> Back it up or fast forward a little bit, whatever it is. But we heard there's, there's almost two stories in this lesson, aren't there? There's this rejection over in Nazareth where, where you know, wait a minute. We, we thought we knew who this guy was. And all of a sudden he's acting a whole lot different than what we would expect. But then the other of it, uh, the Jesus gives his apostles the instruction and sends them out as an extension of his ministry. Now, I, I you know, wrestled with this a little bit and I wondered why is it he's, he's telling these two stories like back to back. And I guess it's because of the contrast that we see in the acceptance of his ministry by his disciples and his rejection for his, the people that he knew in his hometown. There's a, a, a contrast between the closed-mindedness that he finds in his own village and the acceptance of his apostles. May, maybe even the acceptance of this new ministry and rejection of what the Jewish people had in mind when they thought about the Messiah as a conquering hero. Here Jesus comes in humbleness to face the specter of the cross. Now, despite Jesus' close, intimate relationship with the folks from his hometown, they knew him, they knew his family, they knew his trade. They rejected him. Or did they? You know, the Lord laid something new on my heart in, in this week as I was preparing these remarks, something kind of, kind of different. Uh, I, I wanted to examine this relationship with the folks in his hometown. You know, as I say, they knew him and they knew him intimately. They knew his family and his background. You, you'd think that they'd be the ones that would get behind him and, and kind of cheer him on. Hey, you know, you're doing a great thing here. How, you know, how is it that you can do these miracles among our people here in Galilee? But the exact opposite is what happened. They, they didn't accept 
They doubted. They, they used what they had to discourage that ministry. And his ministry seemed to be limited in some form or fashion by their unbelief. I mean, to me, it's not too bad if he can lay hands on a few people and anoint them and they, they get well, but, you know, I've done that. And not everybody got well. <laughs> but it, it's funny if we think about how it is that we love each other. I guess that's what the Lord laid on my heart. You know, we have this command from Jesus that we're to love one another, and especially here in the church. That's, that's our creed, that's you know, our, our, our marching orders, love one another. But you know, if you think about the intimacy of family love, you, you see some discord from time to time, don't you? You know, a, a safe place to confront somebody is, is in a family relationship. You know, you, you can do that there, and you know, well, they still got to love you, right? I wonder if that's not what was going on in Nazareth. If they, you know, here's our boy, Jesus. We all know him. We know his family. We know he's got gifts and graces. We, we've seen that in his in his childhood, in his work. And now he's going to go out and turn the whole world upside down. What if he fails? How's that going to reflect on us? Well, what, you know, what's, what are people going to say about Nazareth? It's amazing. You know, when we think about Jesus, and we, what, what's his title? Jesus of Nazareth. He, he left them in pretty good shape, didn't he? But I got to thinking about hometown heroes, and, and probably the most distinguished guy I know from my hometown uh, that you all would know is a guy by the name of Jim Tressel, right? Yeah, Jim Tressel was just a couple, well, a few years ahead of me in school. A uh, year behind my sister, a year in front of my brother, when he was over at BW, my, my senior year in high school, golly, we went over to the stadium there at Baldwin Wallace, and, and he worked us out. And you know, uh, We were just amazed. What, what a great athlete he was. What a brilliant guy he was. You know, and then to see him succeed, right? A lot of good people from BW. I, 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 I kind of, you know, the blessing, the, the music here is just so wonderful. Oh, my God. I just, I know I'm going to enjoy every minute of that. I don't know how the rest of it's going to go, but I know I'm, we're going to enjoy the music. Sherry and I met in choir at, at the United Methodist Church of Berea. And uh, so we're looking forward to singing and celebrating with you. But, uh, you know, watching Jim Tressel succeed in his coaching career, uh, you know, at Youngstown State, and then, then at Ohio State, you know, the premier program in the whole nation, and, and boy, I'll never forget that uh, championship game against Miami, that, you know, I mean, just uh, back and forth, like a couple of boxers, you know, give and take, and, and he won on top, and boy, we thought here in Ohio, it's the most marvelous thing, and in Berea, you know, we said, that's our boy. Of course he turned out that way. We, we knew it was going to work out like that because we knew Jim Trussell and his family and his dad and his mom. And then, then came this fall, I suppose, you know, this, this, this failure of, of a character that sort of put him in a bad light and, and uh, you know, as much as we love Jim, and there's a reflection then on his, and his upbringing. We're just shocked. It's why it couldn't be that he would step out of line somehow. And, and uh, you know, really a profound disappointment. Just, just let me say it like that. And uh, 
I wonder if that's not the kind of thing that the, that the good people there in Nazareth were afraid of. Hey, what if this Jesus falls flat on his face? The intimacy that the folks in Nazareth had with Jesus and his family caused them to speak plainly to him, I guess. And it's one of the things that I think, as the church of Jesus Christ, we, we need to learn about love. You know, we, we, we can get our feelings hurt pretty easily, can't we? If, if we, there's not give and take in what we express to one another in the church. But as Christians, it's, it's easy to overlook this aspect of, of love. It's not real well understood. You know, we think about just harmony in our relationships, that everybody's got this unity of the Holy Spirit and that we, we love each other. And in case you haven't noticed, life, even in the church, isn't always like that. You know, we have to hold one another accountable in different ways. And I guess that's, that's what we mean when we say blessing. You know, what we're after in loving each other is the blessing for the other. The, the best of all possible outcomes. When, when I say to you, God bless you, what I'm saying is I want you to have the best of all possible outcomes according to God. And when we speak plainly to one another, we need to find a way that it would be a blessing to one another. I, uh, can I use the Bible here? I, this is fine. Uh, you know, there's nothing that's left behind in Jesus Christ. He gives us some instructions in Matthew, Matthew 18. Uh, on how it is that we're to deal with one another in this plain speaking. And, and let me say, <laughs> one of the things that my wife does, my, my wife as a deaconess does, is to teach what's called the rule of Christ. Uh, and I need to uh, put my hands on it here. Chapter 18 uh, yeah, when someone sins, at uh, chapter 18, verse 15, if one of my followers sins against you, if we have some kind of disagreement, let's say it that way, go out and point out what's wrong, but do it in private, just between the two of you. If that person listens, then you won back a follower. But if that one refuses to listen, take along two or three others. The scriptures teach us that every complaint must be proven true by two or more witnesses. And if the follower refuses to listen, then report the matter to the church. Anyone who refuses to listen to the church must be treated like an unbeliever or a tax collector. It sounds harsh there at the end, doesn't it? But I want to say the way that we treat unbelievers is to try and offer them all the hospitality that we can to win them over. So if you get to the end of it and there's still a disagreement, Jesus is saying, start over again. Try it once more. Now, I, I mentioned Sherry has a ministry as a deaconess to teach this rule of Christ to churches that get new pastors. And I guess she's not allowed to teach it here. <laughs> so I, I don't know who's going to be able to teach that to us, but I, I hope you get the gist of it. 
in churches, we're going to speak plainly to one another from time to time. But as we do that, let's all try to make sure it's a blessing to the other person. And if our feelings are hurt, that we, we can uh, go to that person and, and speak one-on-one. -on -one. And say, you know, I didn't understand why it was that we did it this way and what you had in mind, but would you bless me and so I can understand. Is that, that's, I hope that's a little different way to look at things in, in loving one another. Don't be afraid to speak plainly, but do it in the blessing of Christ. Jesus goes from Nazareth, go, you know, hears what these good people were saying to him, and turns to his disciples. He says, look, fellas, it's time to get started in ministry. I'm going to send you out two by two so that you can be accountable to one another. Because you're going to face some trials. You're going to face some temptations. But I want you to have somebody... Who remembers summer camp, you know? Where uh, you went into swimming the first day. And they said, okay, everybody count off. You're going to need a buddy. Right? And when I blow that whistle, the lifeguard blows that whistle. You grab a hold of your buddy. To hold your, you know, somebody to be accountable to. Somebody you know is going to be there when you need them. That's what Jesus was doing with his disciples. He said, go out two by two and know that not everybody is going to agree with what you're saying. This is all new. This is brand new. So uh, a new way of worshiping God. But they didn't do it on their own authority. As I said, this is an extension. They'd been with Jesus. They understood how he was. They, they, I said before this passage that I read, they'd been out on the Sea of Galilee in the midst of a big storm. And it was terrible. They were frightened. They didn't know what to do next. And here's Jesus this guy, they put all their trust in, he's sleeping back here. They wake him up, Jesus, get up, we're going to die. He says, look, you don't have to fear. You don't have to, I'm right here with you. Don't you know that that's what I'm here for? You know, any time that there's an angel that shows up in Scripture somewhere, what's the first words that you hear out of that angel's mouth? Remember, huh? Yeah, remember at Christmas, you know, the angel, the heavenly host appears to those poor shepherds out in the field. <laughs> and they are sore afraid. And the angel says, fear not, fear not. You know, we, we live in a very fragile set of circumstances, if, if I could say it that way. Uh, we, we live in place and time. We live in the conditions of our circumstances. We live in, in a certain frailty in our humanity. You know, if you think about time, there's just no getting around it. We all live in the time. And in doing so, we know we're marching on to a specific appointment that each one of us has with death. And if we're not Christian, if we, if we don't know the beauty of what Christ has done for us by his great sacrifice on the cross and, and the opportunity for the doors of heaven to be opened and, and our eternal existence with this, time can be a very fearsome specter. And place. Place. And you know, I, I, I hate to bring this up on the first day, but, but you know, there's going to be a general conference in the United Methodist Church. 
and there's going to be some decisions that are going to be made. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's not till 2022, but we'll have to decide, are we going to remain in the Methodist church, or are we going to, you know, affiliate with a different uh, denomination? Will there be a new denomination? My point is, will this place still be where we worship? I, I wish we could say with a certainty that, yeah, we, we know we're going to be here, but our circumstances dictate that we don't know that for sure. And if we're not grounded in Christ himself, it's a fearsome thing. What's the rest of A place, place. What about those poor people in Florida? You know, living in that condominium. The next thing, each floor is falling on top of the one above it. You know, there's this frailty and place and time and circumstances and, and, and the frailty of our own bodies. Lord, you know, I mean, I, I, every day it's a new ache of pain, right? We, we understand that. But what if you're a young person with, with the difficulties of a, of a tough diagnosis, you know? I mean, all of us live in the frailty of our own existence. But Christ lives outside. This is why we seek Christ. This is why we need Christ. He's not limited in any way by time. God is eternal or place. God is everywhere. We don't, you know, we come here to worship because we enjoy the beauty of this place, but God is wherever we call on him. And circumstances, you know, it's, it's not that Christ is subject to the circumstances of our lives. He is the one who's responsible for all circumstances. Praise God. And then he doesn't experience the frailties of our, no, he willingly went to the cross to suffer and die so that we could have a way to that eternal life. Now those limitations, the fears that we have, are because of our humanity. We see Christ because he's outside of all those fears and can say with that authority, fear not. I'm with you. Oh. Where do we go? He sent the apostles out to heal, to anoint, to drive out the evil that they uh, found in the world. And that's our ministry just as well, to heal one another in our relationships, in our suffering to drive out the evil that we find in the world. You know, on this day of independence, you know, we, we worry about our nation, don't we? You know, all the conflict that, that we experience, we hear about on the news, and, you know, it, it, it's tiresome. But I guess we wouldn't experience that if we didn't all love this nation in some form or fashion, right? What we want is the best to come of this experiment in democracy. That's what we celebrate today. And, and yes, it's hard to come together if, if you can't agree on different things, but. In the love of Christ, we need to listen to one another and work towards solutions that benefit and bless everyone. 
and more so in the church than anywhere. So what, what's our first line of, of uh, offense in this? To pray, to ask God, oh, you're outside of the frailty uh, of our democracy, but bless this nation. You're outside of the frailty of our own health, but bless us in our coming and our going. You're outside the time and the place that we anticipate is coming, but Lord, bless our future together. You know, prayer should be our first resource, not the last resource. Let's go to him and ask that blessing for one another. The best of all possible outcomes in our relationships and in our partnerships. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we stand and sing? Is that what comes next? <laughs> Help me <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Please be seated. I, I missed the prayer. Is that correct? Let's do that. And then we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper. And again, I'm going to live into your forgiveness uh, this Sunday. And we'll correct and make it better next Sunday. Well, you know, process of continuous improvement. How about that? is a wonderful thing, and we don't want to miss that opportunity this morning. So are there any praises or prayers that you would like to lift up this morning? I'll start off with Vacation Bible School coming up. That's a big one. If you can do nothing else to help, please pray. That is, that is first and foremost the most important thing we can do. Pray for 
young people to sign up. Um, we definitely need youth here in this church or to come experience that. So please be in prayer about that. If you know of anybody, please encourage them to come along. And just pray over the three days that we have together because it is an incredible blessing that we have to get to do that again this year. So I would ask to keep um, that in prayer. Uh, VBS coming up next week. Um, any other prayers or praises that you would like to lift up this morning? Any other? Yes, Betty. Yes. Dave and Nancy Hicks lifting them in prayer. Dave's mother passed away. And Dennis had lifted up. Just praise for uh, all the church workers that we have. We, the church did experience a little bit of flooding this week with all the rain that came. Um, Things got to take care of. So thank you for Praise all that God. helped to lift a hand to uh, take care of that issue. And we are so blessed that it wasn't any worse than what it was. We are very, very fortunate. Any other praises? Yes. Do we have a prayer request for Delaney yes. and a car accident? Delaney Giles, yes. Uh, granddaughter of John and help me mm -hmm. a little with that. But, uh, Delaney yeah. was in a car accident. 17 years old, was in a car accident on Walnut Road. Um, prayers for that whole situation. There was a young man, um, we're working up at Beulah Beach right now, and there was a young child, um, somewhere between 7 and 10 years old, that was, in, was hit by an automobile out front of the camp. Um, just prayers for that family. I don't remember his name. Stephen, maybe. God knows who it is. Uh, a babysitter was watching over him. They were headed back from uh, swimming in the lake and he veered out into the road and was hit by a 17 year old driver. Um, so just prayers for that whole situation. Last we heard he was um, surviving um, and they thought he was going to be okay uh, but things were very grim and he was life flighted. So just prayers for that whole situation. God knows uh, what's going on in there. Any other prayers or praises this morning? Yes, <laughs> that is wonderful. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to hear your voices singing um, this morning with us. That is absolutely fantastic. So thank you. Thank you. Anything else this morning? All right. Seeing none, if you would please be in an attitude of prayer with me. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful. Um, you have blessed us with much, and God, we just pray over the offerings that have been um, given this morning. We, we pray that uh, you will take those and you will use those to further your kingdom, God, in whatever way that you see fit. And, and God, a big part of our offering is us, and God, we just want to offer ourselves to your service in um, however you see fit. God, we have this opportunity for Vacation Bible School coming up, and we pray that uh, your presence is, is all over that. We pray that uh, we can just be servants for you, and we just pray that um, young people will come and have the opportunity to hear about your love um, in creative ways. God, we just thank you for that. We thank you um, for church workers, all those who volunteer uh, and work so hard uh, to make this space what it is. God, you have blessed us with much, and we want to steward that properly. So we thank you for that blessing, and we want to take care of that. So just give us the strength and the willingness to step out of our comfort zones and to help. God, we just pray your presence be with Dave and Nancy at the passing of Dave's mother. Uh, God, give them comfort and peace in this time in their lives. Um, God, we just know that you are there and you are present, and we thank you for their faith. God, we pray for the, the family of Delaney, uh, who was in the accident. We just pray healing upon her, um, this accident that happened, uh, God, and also the one up at Beulah Beach and the young man that was involved in that, all those um, that were involved, just heal broken bodies. We know that you can do that. We've read about it many times, and God, we know you are a God of healing, and we just pray that your presence be in those situations. Give them peace like they've never felt before, and God, just uh, um, may your hand be at work in those, in those situations and just heal those bodies that are broken. God, we just... Uh, 
um, thank you that we can come to you, that we can um, share what's on our hearts, what weighs heavy, and God, those things uh, that put smiles on our faces. We are so blessed, so incredibly, incredibly blessed. So God, we just offer all this up to you, those things that we've spoken and those things that um, are maybe unspoken this morning. God, we all have things on our hearts and our minds um, that weigh heavy and those things that... Uh, God, we want to celebrate, and sometimes we're just not comfortable lifting those up out loud, but we know that you are present and you know what's going on, and we just offer this all to you this morning. God, thank you so much for your love. In your precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, in, in our scripture we heard about Jesus uh, and his gathering his, his friends, the apostles, uh, around him. <clears throat> and so it is that uh, in celebration of the uh, sacrament of Holy Communion, we find Jesus present with all of his friends at the Passover meal. And uh, he invites them to be part of it. They're sharing together and he washes their feet and he just, he, he, he finds the intimacy with them. Even in the most fearsome hour, they, he knows what's going to happen, that he's going to be judged by unrighteous men and, and that he's going to have to die this terrible death and the persecution that all of his disciples are going to face. But in the midst of that, they're celebrating in this wonderful meal. And in the midst of it, he takes bread. And he breaks it. And he gives thanks and he gives it to uh, his disciples around the table and says to them, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do so as often as you eat it, in remembrance of me. And in a similar fashion, when the meal was ended, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it to the disciples all around, and they said to them, drink from this. This is my blood which has been poured out in a new covenant for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and a living sacrifice. And we ask the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us the blessing and to pour out on those that are joining us through the live stream, to pour out a blessing. And upon these gifts of bread and wine, to pour out God's blessing, that they may become for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world, his body, redeemed by his blood. Through Jesus Christ and his holy church, all, through the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The feast has been made ready. I invite you now to come, beginning from the back to partake in this holy meal, to come and receive the bread and the cup with thanksgiving and with joy. Amen. And when do we want to take that to the car? After everybody comes. Okay. Uh, yeah. The invitation is to come now and, and uh, to receive of this holy mystery. And
supposed to eat and drink and fish too. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us to sustain us, to nurture us, to nourish us, that we may do your work in your will and in your way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And lesson? Final hymn. Will you please stand for our closing hymn number 555, Forward Through the Ages.
May God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, strengthen you in every way that you may go forth to love and to serve your neighbor in the love and service of God. Amen. Thank you.